Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here. The moment has finally come, and Zack Snyder's Justice League, aka the Snyder Cut, we've finally seen it, or at least I have. I mean, you, you may not have seen it yet, but that's alright, because this is the non-spoiler review, so no spoilers here. I, I'm just going to talk about how great this movie is. It, it, oh, I, I just love this so much, and... Probably the most important question is, is this better than the 2017 Justice League movie? And, I mean, the answer should be obvious, but yes, it is ten times better. It's just, like, throughout this whole movie, like, half the stuff that's in this movie, I, what's going through my mind is just, like, why would they cut this stuff out? This stuff is so so amazing like especially like the stuff with dark side like why would you get rid of dark side and then all of this different character development with all of the different characters in this movie because yes this movie is four hours and that is long but you can break it up into the different chapters and watch it at your own pace but the four hours makes it work i think because you know in the two and a half hour movie you don't really get to do as much. That That's one of the things that the Justice League 2017 theatrical cut suffered from, is that they just rushed a bunch of stuff. But with it, having four hours here, you really have time to really develop these characters, and the pacing is just so good where it's like, you never really get bored with this movie, because something is always happening, but you do still have those like those kind of quiet moments where you just have two characters talking, but it really develops those characters and makes you fall in love with these characters. Uh, especially, like, you know, Steppenwolf, the villain of this movie, who in Justice League was literally just a guy going around trying to gather all the mother boxes, just saying, mother, and, you know, that whole thing. And it was, like, super confusing, and everybody was like, why is this happening? Why is he doing this? And obviously, hardcore DC fans know with the story with Darkseid and Steppenwolf and everything... But the general audience had no idea. But here they really flesh out Steppenwolf and explain his motives and his relation to Darkseid and really his whole story. And it makes you, I, I, you don't really sympathize for him because he, he is, you know, murdering people and, you know, doing some pretty evil stuff. But you, you do see where he's coming from. You see his goals and you see why he is doing this. So I, I loved seeing that. But... As for the hero side of thing, uh, wow, Cyborg, Zack Snyder was right when he said that Cyborg is the heart of this movie, he truly is the heart of this movie, the theatrical cut barely even saw Cyborg, he really did nothing, his whole story was basically cut out of that movie, here, he is explored so well, and you really fall in love with this character, and you really see how great Ray Fisher is as Cyborg, and this really makes me want to see him return as Cyborg, hopefully in the Flash movie, if they can work things out there, but man, Cyborg was just awesome here, I loved seeing his story developed. Another character here that was uh, developed very well is the Flash, who also, like, you got a little bit of him in, in the Justice League movie, but he gets way more developed here, and a lot of his super cringy jokes were cut out, you know, like the whole brunch thing, like that that was that was just weird. So luckily he doesn't do that in this movie. Uh I mean he is a still a little weird. I'm I'm still not a big fan of Ezra Ezra Miller as the Flash and I mean he still runs weird. Like he he just does not look like somebody that knows how to run. So and that's kind of the whole point of the Flash. But you know, he did have some pretty cool moments here. He did have some pretty cool epic moments with un uncovering the Flash's powers and everything. So I think he had some cool moments. And I I enjoyed the character more than I did in the theatrical cut. But still, not a big fan of Ezra Miller's The Flash. Then, of course, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Aquaman. They're all great. They got more stuff to do here. But overall, not any big changes from their characters in the theatrical cut. But... The character that did get some pretty cool stuff, it, other than Cyborg, which was really the highlight, we have Superman. And Superman, oh, he was just so 
so awesome in this movie. The the resurrection was just done so better in this movie. And Superman isn't really even in this movie much more than he was in the theatrical cut. He doesn't even come in until like the last hour-ish of the movie. Probably a little more than that. But he's not really in it that much. But the time he is in it, it's just so powerful. Like I said, the resurrection and... There's really some emotional scenes, like especially when he gets back to the Kent farm. He has a pretty emotional scene there uh, that, I'm going to be honest, I cried for. So I I just love this character in this movie and him with the black suit and everything. He was just so cool. And with this movie, you really see that this is Superman's trilogy. You know, everybody's complaining about we never got a Man of Steel 2. And, you know, a Man of Steel 2 would be awesome, but... We basically did. Batman v Superman was basically Man of Steel 2. And then Zack Snyder's Justice League was the third movie. This is Superman's trilogy. Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Justice League. This is this extends the story of Superman and really brings this character full circle and wraps up his story. And then obviously he would go on in on a different path and explore the universe more. But, you know... That's if we actually get Henry Cavill back as Superman. But I, I just really, really loved him in this movie. And we do get an epilogue at the end. And uh, this epilogue was really, really cool. Uh, because it basically sets up what would have been the future of the DCEU. And it sets up all these different spin-off movies. It sets up the Batman movie, the Flash spin-off movie, Aquaman, and basically all this other stuff that we wanted to do, all the stuff that DC originally planned to do. And just imagine if this movie came back, came out back in 2017, this full four-hour movie in 2017, this would have been out before Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, and it just would have had such an impact. And DC wouldn't be trying to catch up with Marvel. They would have been even with Marvel at this point. And... Wow, it's just crazy to think about that if Warner Brothers hadn't made that mistake back then, we could have had this this whole time. And man, it's just crazy. And one of my final thoughts coming out of this movie is just restore the Snyderverse because this does end on a cliffhanger, actually multiple cliffhangers that you really, it really leaves you wanting more. And I do want more. I want to see the Snyderverse restored. That's right. We want Zack Snyder's Justice League 2. We want Justice League 3. We want Man of Steel 2. We want that Batfleck HBO Max series. We want the air cut of Suicide Squad. We want it all. All all of the Snyderverse. Uh, Even a Cyborg spinoff movie or HBO Max series. Either one would be great. This movie really made me love that character. I didn't really care for him before, but I love Cyborg and... I'm I'm admitting that because he he really is an awesome character in this movie and all the characters are way better in this movie than they were in Justice League and man th- this is just such a huge improvement um and I'm not going to get too much further into it because again this is the non-spoiler review but I am going to be posting a full in-depth spoiler review and breakdown on my DC channel The DC Life definitely go subscribe to that if you haven't already Uh, So that'll be posting later today. I'll post it as soon as possible. But yeah, guys, this was crazy. Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think I got to give it a full on 9 out of 10. It was it was that good. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it, it was it's 9 out of 10 quality. This is just such a huge improvement. And I can't wait to get into breaking this down with all the spoilers and everything. So, guys, of course, let me know down in the comments below without spoilers all your thoughts on this movie. Did you think it was an improvement? What did you think about the four-hour length? What were your favorite characters? So, let me know. And thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video. And hit the subscribe button so I can keep up to date on everything that goes on in the DC life.